Welcome to today's presentation on calculating rate of closure. In the wrap process, we've had several tools to help us calculate rate of closure. We found that some of them have been either inconsistent or given erroneous results. Today's presentation will talk about a new tool that will help us calculate rate of closure in a consistent and accurate manner. It's based on the same method used by Eurocontrol. First, let's consider lateral closure. In this example, we have two airplanes heading towards each other on a collision course at 250 knots. It's obvious to see that we have a 500 knot closure rate. As the aircraft continue to approach each other, we have a constant bearing and decreasing range. So from each pilot's perspective, the other airplane is continuing to be on the same bearing as he looks out his window, and the range is decreasing. Whenever we have this situation, the airplanes are on a collision course, and we can see that our closure is still 500 knots. Let's take a situation that's similar but slightly different. In this case, the airplanes still have a 250 knot airspeed. They're headed towards each other, but they're not actually on a collision course. They're going to pass a beam each other. So as they're far away from each other, we can see that the closure is still about 500 knots. The difference is, is that we have a slight angle between the two airplanes. As the airplanes continue to move towards each other, we can see that this angle is changing. And as they get a beam each other, we can see that we've gone from about 500 knots of closure to zero knots of closure until they pass each other and then the closure is negative. So what is changing? Well, the first thing is the rate of closure. We saw that we went from about 500 knots of closure to zero knots of closure to a negative closure. And the other thing that was changing was the angle between aircraft one and aircraft two. To help us understand this a little better, let's look at the anatomy of a vector. So a vector is something that gives us both direction and magnitude, or in, case, in our case, speed. So direction and speed. It's represented by an arrow here, labeled V. This is our vector vector. Every ve vector can be broken up into two components along the x and y axis. And this is done by making a line from the end of the vector that intersects our axis at a right angle. So we can see if we drop a right angle down to the axis, we end up with an x component. If we drop one over to the y axis, we end up with a y component, and we can see our angle here. If you're interested, we can see the formulas for each of these components. For x, we multiply v, in this case, our speed, or the magnitude of our vector, so the speed times the cosine of the angle. For the y component, we take the speed times the sine of the angle. So let's take a look at an example of two airplanes that are approaching each other. Let's draw our x and y axis. And then let's take a look at the X and Y components for both aircraft 1 and 2. If we take a look at this, we can get a graphical picture of what's happening. So we can see that this Y component for aircraft 1 is actually the speed of aircraft 1 parallel to aircraft 2, and the Y component for aircraft 2 is the speed of aircraft 2 parallel to aircraft 1. So we're not really concerned too much with this vector, because that's not what causes them to go towards each other. Now if we look at the X component, we can see for aircraft one, this is the speed of aircraft one, or his portion of his vector that is going towards aircraft two. And the same thing for aircraft two, this is the portion of the vector, the component of the vector that goes from aircraft one toward aircraft two. It could go towards, it could go away, but this is the portion that we're concerned with. Now let's put some numbers here and see how these things work out. So first of all, aircraft one is on a 030 degree heading at 300 knots, with aircraft two on a 320 degree heading at 250 knots. 
The other important ingredient to this calculation is the course or heading of aircraft one to aircraft two. And in this case, it's 090 degrees. So if we take a look at the X component for aircraft one, which again is the speed of aircraft one towards aircraft two, we'll put the numbers in for the math and we see that 300 knots times the cosine of the angle. In this case, what we need to do for the angle is we're gonna take the angle of aircraft one to aircraft two or the heading or course of aircraft one to aircraft two and then we're going to subtract the heading of the airplane so in this case it's 090 minus 030 and we come out with 150 knots and it's a positive number remember that vectors indicate direction and magnitude so the direction is indicated by the sign a sign of positive means to the right Let's take a look at the X component of aircraft two, which is the speed of aircraft two toward aircraft one. We'll put in our numbers 250 knots times the cosine of the angle, in this case 090, which is the course from aircraft one to aircraft two, minus aircraft two's heading, 320 degrees. And in this case, we end up with a negative number, negative 167.60.7 knots. Negative means a left direction. To get the combined closure, we're going to take the difference, or we're going to subtract the two, and our closure comes out to be 150 knots minus a negative 160.7 to give us about 311 knots. Now let's take a look as these airplanes continue to move through the sky, what happens? Aircraft 1 is still doing the same heading and speed and the same with aircraft 2, but what has changed now is the angle between, or the heading or course between aircraft 1 and aircraft 2, which is 120 degrees now. So we need to kind of tilt our axis along that line from aircraft 1 to aircraft 2. So first of all, we're going to break our components down for X and Y for aircraft 1 and aircraft 2. So the Y component now is the darker red line along the Y axis. And for the X axis, we want to drop a perpendicular line down from the end, which basically gives us no length. For aircraft 2, we look at our Y axis, which is the dark green line along the Y axis. And then our X component along the X axis. If we look at the math, we'll look first at the speed of aircraft one towards aircraft two. We put the numbers in, 300 knots times the cosine, again, of the angle from aircraft one to two minus the air, air, aircraft's heading. And we come up with zero knots, just like it looks in the picture. Let's take a look at the X component for aircraft two. We see this is the speed of aircraft two towards aircraft one. 250 knots times the cosine of the angle gives us a negative 234.9 knots. We take the difference of the two and we end up with about 235 knots of closure. And we can see as the airplanes are moving through space that angle is changing and our speed in this case has decreased. The closure went from about 311 knots to 234 knots. So we can see that as the angle or the course from aircraft one to aircraft two changes, the rate of closure also changes. The other thing that we can see is that the rate of closure is the difference in the component of closure along the line from aircraft one to aircraft two. In other words, the component that lies along that line from one to two is the portion that we're concerned with. Let's take a little picture of what's going on and that will help explain what we're talking about. So our first example, we had the two airplanes abeam each other. We drew our line from aircraft one to aircraft two. Then we want to find out the component of the vector along that line. And remember to do that, we're going to drop a line from the head of the vector down that intersects that line from one to two at a right angle. So we'll do that for aircraft one and we get aircraft one vector along that line from aircraft one to two. We'll do the same thing for aircraft two. And in our first example, we had 311 knots of closure. For our second example, we do the same thing. We're gonna draw a line from aircraft one to two. 
We'll look for the x vector, which in this case is 0. We're going to look for the x component of the aircraft 2 by drawing a line that is at a right angle with that course line. And we end up with 235 knots of closure. Now as the airplanes continue to move, we can see that aircraft 2 is now starting to go behind slightly aircraft 1 and it looks like maybe the closure is uh, going to be 0 or even a negative number but let's take a look we draw a line from 1 to 2 we're going to take a look at the x component of aircraft 1 by dropping a line down to form a right angle and we can see that aircraft 1's closure is actually going away from aircraft 2 so this would actually be a negative number we do the same thing with aircraft 2, we draw a line that forms a right angle with that course line. And we see that aircraft 2's vector is towards aircraft 1. It's a little bit longer. And when we take the difference, we end up with 96 knots of closure. So even though aircraft 2 is starting to pass behind, there still is actually a positive closure rate. In our fourth example, we see aircraft 2 is starting to move even further behind aircraft 1. We draw that line from aircraft 1 to 2 and figure out the x component for each airplane. And we can see in this case they're about the same length and we end up with a closure of 0 knots. So our rate of closure is that each aircraft's component of closure along the line between aircraft 1 and aircraft 2. Now let's take a look at how we're going to use our tool to calculate rate of closure. Our tool is the Rate of Closure Knowledge Enhancement Tool, which we like to call ROCKET for short. Okay, now we have the ROCKET tool open. We can see the file name is ROCKET XLM, XLSM, an Excel file, and uh, where there are some directions here, one for computing lateral closure, one for computing vertical closure. We have a little diagram to help you determine uh, aircraft 1 to aircraft 2. Now the key to this tool is to pick aircraft 1 and aircraft 2. It doesn't matter which airplane is which, but when we use the course line from aircraft 1 to aircraft 2, we have to use the same aircraft 1. If we reverse it, we're going to get incorrect information. So let's take a look using our first example. We'll start out putting aircraft 1 heading in, in the heading 1 box, 030. I'll use tab to move over to speed of 300 knots. For aircraft 2, we had 320. And for the speed of aircraft 2, 250 knots. I'll hit tab again. It'll bring me to the aircraft 1 to aircraft 2. And in that case, we had a 090 course. Now we can see that it hasn't computed anything here. We see that no data in the lateral cl closure box. And that's not going to compute anything until I hit tab. Once I do, we can see 311 knots. And that's all really all there is to calculating lateral closure using the rocket tool. Okay, now let's take a look at calculating vertical closure. Right now the CEDAR gives us uh, good information for cal a calculation of vertical closure and I suggest we continue to use that. Uh, however, the tool will calculate vertical closure uh, if you need it. So let's take a look at how that works. So the first thing you're going to need to do to calculate vertical closure is go to CEDAR and open up the separation details. Now I've copied some separation details in a spreadsheet, but it looks the same. You're familiar with the headings here. And the key is to copy everything just starting below the uh, headings here. So do not copy the headings. Just start at the very first portion with the date and time and then continue to copy everything down until you've copied all of the separation details. Now you can use control C to copy or of course you can right click and click copy. I'm going to go over to the rocket tool. I'm going to put my cursor right next in this box just uh, to the right of the uh, blue arrow. Once I'll do, do that I can hit control V to paste 
or I can right click and what I want to do is we see a little picture so select the one that looks more like the clipboard depicted in the picture so I right click here's the one here I'm going to select that once I've done that you can see it calculated the vertical closure 667 feet per minute the other thing it will do is calculate the minimum MOC in this case 4.2 percent <clears throat> And we can see if we scroll down here, it will highlight any MOCs that have that number. Now, there may be more than one, so make sure you scroll all the way down. A couple main uh, important things to do are remember always, whatever aircraft one is, make sure your course is from aircraft one to aircraft two. Uh, for calculating vertical closure, Normally this number will be set to one, so it's going to start with the first hit. The tool needs at least two hits and will calculate up to four hits together. We'll try to average up to four hits if it has four hits. If the first loss is on hit number one, it'll start with hit number one. But if you select a later hit, it will start with the hit prior to the one that you selected. So in this case, uh, if I select number two, it's still going to use the number one. I still have to hit tab for it to compute. You see, can see that it hasn't changed. But if I use hit number three, it will calculate a different number. Now, the algorithm does put more weight on hits one and two and less weights hit on hit three and four so that uh, most of the weight of the average will be on hits one and two because a lot of times we'll see by the time we get to hit three and four the airplanes may have already passed. Another important feature of the tool is the clear sheet button here. Uh, you have to have macros enabled to be able to use this and basically it will clear us all the data out and start us over with a clean sheet. So I'll click that and we can see that everything is back to zero. The important thing about that is we haven't left some bad data in. We didn't leave uh, the wrong hit number in here or maybe an old aircraft to one to aircraft two number. Another way to get around that is to close the tool and open it up. Just make sure that you don't save any data. Uh, if you do, you can still use the tool. You're just going to have data in there that may need to be changed. Well, this concludes the rate of closure presentation for today. I hope this helps you understand how closure is calculated. Again, this uses the same model that Eurocontrol uses. I hope this tool will be something that is simple to use, gives us consistent and accurate results along all of the service areas, and that we can continue to use this until uh, we get something better, maybe something automated in CEDAR. If you have any questions or concerns or problems with the tool, you can give me a call or send me an email. Thank you.